so we got the truck bed removed and it was really rusty so rusty that we were only relying on four bolts to hold us down four out of eight bolts were rusted out so in other words if those four bolts that we we're relying on wore off the whole thing the bed the camper could have just slipped right off of the truck while driving crazy to think about and now it's time to restore the frame and build a whole new bed so i need to get it close to the mud as possible Got everything grinded out as much as possible. This little machine here. Uh, there's a lot to pick up. Look at the rust that's underneath this. So far it's turning out pretty good. This, the frame is solid, so I'm so happy to see that it is. I don't see any cracks or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of elbow grease and banging away. My hand is pretty numb, but next thing here is to power wash this. I'm gonna look into some paints and stuff for this, see what the best product is out there. Or not the best, but just a decent product for this. I'm not trying to get this perfect because I know it's an older truck and the rust is like a virus. It's gonna come back no matter what, um, but it's gonna give us a few years, at least. And, uh, but yeah, so clean this up, power wash, and I'm gonna go have some lunch. So a few days have passed and finally got the steel for the truck frame, bed frame. Here it is. It's, uh, it's a two by one, uh, 11 gauge steel. I got three 20 foot sticks so 60 feet total and that cost me about 96 dollars this is what i did to get it fit in there i put it right through the window tied it down and we made it work they were going to charge me a lot more to get it cut even just get it cut in half was a little bit more i'm like you know i can do it myself so get it cut and uh yeah let's just see let's see what happens here but as far as what I need for length to build this, so far I've calculated about 53 feet. So I'm gonna have an extra seven feet to play with. And it never hurts to have extra, because you never know. All right, I got uh, the frame cut to size. And this is what's kind of general idea of what it's gonna look like. So we're looking at one tube, two, three and four going across this way and then one on each side eight feet on each side and six and a half feet on this side this is kind of how the bed frame on the chevy bed cross members are already like right here they were they were already laid out like this so we're gonna try to just re i'm just reenacting it the same way and this is pretty heavy duty stuff Two feet here cut to size for that backboard. It's gonna go across with another six and a half foot and then straight down with another two foot. We're gonna tack it, weld it, and then put the ply board or some kind of wood on top of it. So I got, just picked up uh, half inch bolts, lock nuts, washers. These are five inch long bolts. These are four inch long bolts. The four inches are gonna go for the back of the frame part and these are gonna go for the front since there's a little higher up there. So we're gonna screw it onto the stock mounting brackets that are on the frame already of the truck. There's one, two, and there's three, four. Fortunately, my father-in-law knows how to weld. Actually, he's a, a jack of all trades, and he's been a huge blessing uh, for us from the beginning of our travels, and we just feel blessed. I asked him, though, how he learned welding, and 
surprisingly enough, he said he learned welding in high school, back in his day. And I started thinking, I wish I learned welding in high school. I can't believe they actually taught important stuff back in the day. Seems like the education system nowadays is quite the opposite. Okay, now that the frame is already built, now I'm at a Menards and I'm going to pick up some cedar wood here for the deck of this bed frame. So far, so good here. I just started painting it with some rust paint. Starting to look pretty good. Okay, here it is. I have these uh, magnet lights. Um, since the camper is always going to be on here, the camper already has tail lights and all that stuff, so I'm not going to worry about installing any kind of uh, lighting on this. Probably just carry this around if I ever have to unmount the camper, but I don't do that. The last time we did that, like I said, we've kept the camper on there 24-7 for the past two years until recently just to do this project. But pretty much the next step here is to add like a side, a side wall, door, gate thingamajiggy that goes up, flips down. I have a lot of things that are in the back seat of this truck that can go right here. And even though that's about, what, a foot of space or maybe less than that, it's still space and it's reachable space now. Unlike with the original bed, it would just crawl up and I couldn't, you know, obviously bring that part down. I'd have to reach my hand over and pretty much never grabbed anything out of there. But this time I'm going to have that easy access. It looks really good actually. And I, I'm actually, I like the way we uh, laid out the steel with this going on top of that. And we put the steel, this steel sideways here. And it's sturdy. Yeah, so I didn't really want to cut the flatbed to make a, a wheel well deal, but it is what it is. And I'm going to try to have it so I can take the wheel well off, put maybe like a metal sheet over it if I ever want to use it as a flatbed. So I'm going to try to make it as versatile as possible. The final result. Still a couple things left, touch ups to do, such as covering up the gas cap and little mini things, but nothing major. Most of it is all done. These are the sidewalls, the wheel wells that I had to build for tire clearance. They didn't do much for the back. Uh, don't really feel like there's a need for much of it. The camper is going to cover that anyway. L brackets to mount these side walls onto the bed. The wheel wells here, I could unscrew all of it, put a flat plate over it if I ever want to use this as a flat bed. And I could take these off too if I ever have to. It's definitely going to clear now. It should. I had the camper on there to test out, to test this out without the wheel wells, and it was pretty much the weight of the camper was bringing this down, and just it was laying right on the tire. So right now, I mean, I could you know, there's airbags. I have airbags that'll lift up the the, give more clearance, but I don't I don't want to rely on the airbags for that. And here's the flip down. Now I can just have access to extra storage space. I think it looks pretty good though. Some people might say, hey, why don't you just get a new truck? To me, newer doesn't always mean better. I'm the type of person where I like 
vintage old things. If I can restore something that works perfectly fine, then I will. As a society, I feel like we, we move on too fast and we're conditioned to always want the latest, newest items. And I view old items, vintage items, used items uh, with character. Uh, to me, the older the item is, the better it is because it was actually made in the USA, made with pride, pure manpower. It has character, a little bit of rust here and there. I love that. And there's just history behind it. And as the old saying goes, they don't make them like they used to.